For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. Early this week on Monday, the last of the friction points on the Eastern Ladakh line of actual control with China was vacated by both Indian and Chinese troops. That's the topic of this week's Ask Nitin and it is coming very quickly because new information is being made available as the days go by. So I am recording this without any questions from uh, the audience or uh, any written questions uh, on Twitter or otherwise because the earlier questions have slightly become redundant and uh, the information that I am getting on uh, Friday and Saturday is what I am sharing with you on this edition of Ask Nitin. I am Nitin Gokhale. So, as all of you are aware, the two sides, Indian and Chinese sides declared on 8th of September that disengagement on the PP-15 Gogra Hot Springs area along the line of actual control in eastern Ladakh has been started and it took four or five days more to uh, really complete the disengagements. So, on 12th of September, both sides declared that they have verified the disengagement and the pulling back of forces who were face to face at PP-15, which also has a, has a pass that leads into Aksai Chin. From there, the forces have pulled back whatever remnants of forces that were there, uh, minuscule uh, strength of the forces in that area have been pulled back. Which means that all the friction points which had got established after China's aggression in April and May 2020 have now got resolved, even if temporarily, after marathon rounds of discussions, 16 rounds of discussions between core commanders on both sides. Indian side was led, as all of you know, by the uh, core commander of the 14 core, the lay based 14 core. And uh, the Chinese side, of course, was represented by uh, their uh, equivalent core commander uh, in the uh, Western Theatre Command. It has been a long haul uh, in a way, two and a half years nearly, but nothing compared to what had happened in Sundarangchu in Arunachal Pradesh which took nine years to resolve the uh, standoff at Wangdung uh, or at Sundarangchu between uh, 1986 to about 1993-94. So, in a way, uh, the 90 percent of the resolution of the uh, disengagement process uh, has been achieved in Eastern Ladakh after the standoff started in April 2020. But, Two old issues uh, still remain, uh, China's blocking of Indian patrols at uh, the Y junction in the Depsang plains uh, on the north side of the eastern Ladakh uh, line of actual control and uh, the legacy dispute at Demchok or at the CNN junction as it is called, Charding Ninglung Lala uh, area where the Chinese want Indians to uh, give up their claims on the uh, grazing grounds, the pastures which, which are there because they think that uh, if they do not stand there, India will gain access to areas which are vulnerable uh, as far as Chinese controlled territory in Aksai Chin is concerned. Nevertheless, there have been a lot of comments on uh, whether India has lost ground, whether the, uh, the buffer zones that have been created now are on the Indian side and uh, whether India has compromised on its territorial uh, integrity and sovereignty. Well, uh, it is not uh, an easy answer to give because what is uh, status quo? India wants status quo as of April 2020. Now, the dispute or the claims and counterclaims between two sides have been going on since 1959 or even post-1962. So, India uh, had uh, marked out a LAC for itself where petrol points were uh, demarcated or uh, sort of established on the map and Indian Army and ITBP patrols used to go to these petrol points 
without holding territory. So they used to go there and come back just to show flag and assert uh, India's presence there. So what happened in April 2020 was the Chinese tried to come in all along the eastern Ladakh line of actual control. So all of you are aware that uh, post May 2020, several friction points or standoff locations got established where the two sides faced each other very closely, eyeball to eyeball confrontation, starting with the north bank of Pengangso, then the southern bank of Pengangso. Then when India did a repost in uh, August 2020, occupying the Kailash range of uh, mountains or Kailash range of the hills there, looking into the Chinese side, which forced China to uh, accelerate the negotiations. And then that face off was again resolved as the first uh, phase of uh, disengagement in February 2021. Following that, PP17 Alpha uh, was uh, vacated. Uh, the uh, dispute between uh, Finger 4 and Finger 8 on the uh, uh, Pengangso uh, were also resolved, where a buffer zone between Finger 4 and Finger 8 was created and China was forced to go back east of Finger 8, preventing it, uh, its patrols from coming up to Finger 4 or Finger 3, which was the norm. India used to go to finger 8, Indian patrols, they have also uh, now not going there and under the agreement. So uh, one by one these friction points were overcome or these friction points were resolved uh, when this happened. The most contentious was the PP15 uh, near the Galwan um, uh, valley and where the Galwan clash took place on 15 June 2020, resulting in the first deaths in combat on the line of actual control between India and China in nearly 45 years. So, uh, what has India gained from this uh, particular uh, disengagement uh, or the last uh, disengagement that has taken place? Two or, things have, uh, two or three things have happened. One, the Chinese wanted to push back India or Indian uh, positions or Indian patrols uh, had to be disallowed by the Chinese because they were apprehensive that rapid infrastructure development where India was playing catch up with China, was helping Indian forces stage uh, much more forward. They were now coming uh, more frequently to uh, PP15 uh, near uh, the um, Galwan Valley uh, and uh, where uh, they could sort of launch an offensive if they wanted to into the uh, Aksai Chin area held by China. So China uh, deployed heavy um, numbers or large number of uh, troops in uh, this Galwan Valley PP15 area on the pass uh, where uh, there were uh, trenches, large trench complexes, there were surveillance posts, there were outposts, there were also um, uh, barracks uh, built uh, for uh, the troops staying there, which means they had almost uh, more or less created a permanent habitation around PP15. But now the Chinese have had to go back 15 kilometers to their larger camp, uh, which is away from the camp, from the uh, the pass, uh, and uh, where uh, they had to uh, now uh, fill up all those uh, dug up trenches, uh, what they call filling up the landforms uh, or restoring the landforms, uh, dismantling uh, surveillance posts, outposts and go back 15 kilometers from uh, what is perceived as India's line of actual control. India came back about 4 kilometers. Uh, it had a very uh, minuscule presence, very minor presence of uh, a company strength or a platoon strength there, which was temporary in nature. And uh, what has happened is the semi-permanent post that India had at uh, that area has also been pulled back into Indian territory, creating a buffer zone. Uh, where uh, the, neither the Chinese nor the Indian patrols will go up to uh, these points. Now, uh, this is where uh, one has to be very careful about uh, declaring that India has won this round or China has won this round because neither side has really gained much. They have uh, come into what is called a strategic stalemate, except for the Depsang uh, bulge standoff and the Demchok uh, standoff, uh, which I explained earlier, these, the entire eastern Ladakh boundary now has the uh, presence of uh, forces on both sides. And um, in this area, uh, the, the kind of demilitarized buffer zones that have been created 
are something that uh, helps India in strengthening its positions behind the line of actual control there earlier India did not have that kind of presence. It has taken uh, very high level uh, interaction apart from the core commanders uh, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi was here. Uh, there was uh, the number of meetings of the WMCC, the working mechanism of a coordination and um, uh, consultation on the China border affairs between the two sides. It has also taken uh, what I call uh, a lot of patience on both sides to come to uh, this area. So, the disengagement at PP15 has to be seen from two angles. In the Changchenmo sector which is north of uh, PP15, the uh, Chinese were apprehensive that uh, the Indian Indo-Tibet border police post uh, at Karam Singh Hill uh, at the junction of Kundrang and Changchenmo rivers uh, and an outpost at Gogra uh, at PP 15, 16 and 17 were patrolled but were not physically held. So, they were alarmed that if this area is developed, India will have a permanent presence and uh, will uh, allow them a staging ground to go into Aksai Chin. Now, this is where uh, the assessment uh, has to be correct that the buffer zone uh, in all likelihood will give both sides a breather. There are no face to face meetings between the two troops. There is a less likelihood of a physical clash like happened at Galwan and uh, therefore, uh, India can uh, go about its development of the infrastructure as it wants and uh, the Chinese uh, also will feel that they have uh, accomplished whatever they wanted uh, when they started this uh, aggression in April 2020 or uh, consolidated it in May 2020. Therefore, uh, neither side now can alter the uh, situation short of a limited war which I do not think either India or China wants and uh, definitely uh, Chinese have a uh, higher stake in uh, keeping the stalemate on because without winning a decisive victory, the Chinese cannot claim that uh, they are a larger power. Uh, which they are. I mean, the power differential between India and China is uh, huge. Uh, the size of the economy of the Chinese is five times India's, size of the military is uh, almost three times India's. So, therefore, the Chinese have to have a decisive victory which they were denied in Ladakh in this last two and a half years. They may have uh, sort of come forward some 100 meters, 200 meters at some places, some one kilometer at some other place. but under the circumstances and under the uh, entire uh, development that took place of uh, rapid deployment by the Chinese and mirroring of that deployment by the Indian forces, I think India has uh, been um, you know reasonably uh, good in holding the Chinese uh, where they were and not allowing them uh, any gains, any substantial gains if I may use that word in uh, Eastern Ladakh. Now, that will alter the equation on the on the border uh, both in uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim, uh, Uttarakhand and uh, in Ladakh. So, therefore, Indian army has demonstrated that it can withstand any pressure, it can uh, reverse the situation as it did uh, by deploying uh, a surprise or uh, affecting a surprise against the Chinese. And the Chinese have also perhaps learned a lesson that while they can uh, bring in uh, a larger quantum of forces, it does not necessarily give them the advantage that they were looking for. So, a strategic stalemate has ensured on the border uh, on the LAC and it is now up to the, uh, the political leadership of both countries to make a breakthrough if they need to. But uh, that uh, looks like uh, not happening uh, in the near future. One hope uh, that was there that at the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization summit meeting in Samarkand, which uh, ended on uh, Friday, the two sides uh, or the two leaders would have met on the sidelines uh, either uh, during a pull aside or a formal bilateral meeting, which did not happen. Prime Minister Modi met uh, President Putin of Russia, uh, met the President of Iran, met the uh, obviously the host of uh, the summit, uh, the President of Uzbekistan and surprisingly met uh, Erdogan, the president of uh, uh, Turkey 
uh, against all uh, expectations, but not President Xi Jinping of China. Now, clearly, India has indicated that it is unhappy with uh, what has happened on the border. And as uh, External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar has been saying time and again, that the dispute or the tension on the border with China cannot be delinked from the overall relationship between India and China. And unless the border is calmer, the border is uh, under control or the border situation is under control, India cannot think of normalizing relations with China. I think it's a strong enough message, it's a clear enough message from India. Uh, by not meeting Prime Minister Modi is also, not meeting Xi Jinping, Prime Minister Modi has also now sent that message. Uh, which is uh, something that uh, a lot of people uh, hoped that he uh, may not do. They thought they will meet uh, Xi Jinping and uh, Prime Minister Modi might meet, but that did not happen, which clearly shows that India has made its intentions clear that unless the situation on the border normalizes, India is not going to look for a compromise at the political level or even an engagement at the political level. I am sure they are talking behind the scenes. Uh, their uh, interlocutors, the foreign ministers have met, defense ministers have met uh, on the sidelines of other summits. Uh, the special representatives may or may not be talking to each other from both sides. But obviously, there is a back channel working between India and China. And with the disengagement uh, that has happened at PP15, perhaps there is now an opportunity to look for uh, new mechanisms of border management along the entire LAC. And, of course, then look for political discussions, political solutions or political dialogue going forward. That's all I had uh, this time. There were a couple of questions which had come in the form of a, uh, a, form of a written uh, queries. So, Umesh Prabhu had asked uh, that, uh, is India satisfied with the disengagement at PP15? I've already answered that question. Yet, under the circumstances, this was the best deal one could get, India could get and this, this is what uh, this is what has happened. Shivan Kak uh, was uh, asking me this question uh, earlier, before this recording happened, he had sent this question on YouTube. Whether the internal situation in China for Xi Jinping and the kind of economic, political and party downturn on a large scale uh, is uh, making him uh, coming uh, onto a weaker wicket. Uh, well, again, it's very difficult to predict uh, the very fact that Xi Jinping has travelled out of China after 32 months uh, sh clearly shows that he's in total control. Uh, he's not afraid of any dissent or any opposition to him. And by uh, end of uh, next month in October, he would be uh, elected for the third unprecedented time as uh, General Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party and of course, President of uh, China. So, he is clearly in control. Rahul Sharma had asked um, that uh, there is a new status quo uh, on the uh, what uh, Lieutenant General Rakesh Sharma called on my previous program earlier this week as belt of actual control, which means the buffer zone has been created. Instead of the line, there is a belt now where neither side can go to and which is a correct thing as I have explained already in my opening remarks. I think uh, these uh, three or four things have happened and I think uh, on balance, India should be happy, should be satisfied that things haven't gone out of control in Ladakh. Uh, but uh, eternal vigil along the line of actual control and the McMahon line in Arunachal Pradesh or the central sector in Uttarakhand must uh, remain uh, under watch and India must keep on building its strength and capability to take on the larger uh, challenge from China and uh, not uh, let uh, complacency set in as uh, the uh, solution or the resolution uh, keeps on happening on the border in bits and pieces as we have seen in the past two and a half years. That's all I have uh, time for or uh, at least uh, that's the information that I have. So, uh, do keep uh, watching Strat News Global and of course, Ask Nitin is your platform. It's meant to be uh, a platform where we exchange views, we uh, discuss issues. And uh, you can send your queries and questions and your comments uh, on our YouTube channel uh, of Strat News Global. And uh, do give us feedback. You know where to follow us. If you're already following our uh, social media handles, tell your friends, family, acquaintances to follow us. Uh, give us uh, ideas and we will come back with more and more programs as we go forward. For the moment, it's goodbye.